So recently I released a video looking at watches that prove that you are a watch enthusiast. And quickly after posting that video, recognize that there certainly could be a part two. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now, the whole gist of this concept is basically you see a watch or a type of watch on somebody's wrist, you would feel confident in just seeing that just brand there that that person has to be an enthusiast because there'd be no other way that they come across that brand unless they got into this wormhole that is the watch enthusiast community. So that's the premise. Also keep in mind that there was a previous video in this series, so if you see something that is missing here, then that is perhaps why, and then we could probably do another one of these in the future as well. Another final thing to keep in mind is the fact that there are popular brands that enthusiasts love, of course, and are can be indicators, but I don't think you should throw in something that could be widely available at say like any mall or any type of just department store, because I think that's a little bit obvious and there are possibilities that the person that you might be approaching might not be a true watch enthusiast. So that I think gives us the ground rules. So before we get into this video, I do wanna mention another giveaway opportunity up to $1,600, pick out three watches on teddybaldister.com, fill out the form, add three links to the form and just pick out your favorites. And then if you're selected to win, you then would have the opportunity to choose one of those watches of your choice for free. So fill out the form and good luck to all of you guys that participate. We just announced the $1,500 winner, but just wanna keep it moving with another one. I uh, really do appreciate all you guys that participated and wanna just keep giving back and spreading the love and <laughs> just new watches. So let's jump into the video. Now, first up, we probably have the number one omission in the previous video that absolutely should be included. This is a total enthusiast brand, a brand that I greatly appreciate and have some personal connection to just given where I am based and where I live. Now that is Ball Watch Company. So a little bit of backstory about this brand from a modern context first, really are producing some of the best tool watches for the money really in that $1,000 to $4,000 range. I think they are really at the top end of brands that are doing this incredibly well. Now, the connection to Cleveland and how this brand has gotten its roots. Now, of course, very different brand in a modern context, but where it all kind of originates from, I think does help give further appreciation for uh, what this brand is all about and the type of people that will have admiration for it. So it was founded in 1891 by Webb C. Ball. He was a, a man that really was able to lead a lot of the charge when it came to uh, helping industrialize the railroad as a byproduct of creating chronometer precision timepieces that would be able to be used aboard actual trains because there was a crash in Kip Kipton, Ohio, it's a very small city. I actually did a video where I went to Kipton, Ohio, kind of reviewing an engineer M Marvelite from Ball. One of my favorite videos that I have completed on the channel. I definitely recommend checking it out if you've not seen that video yet. But that crash had two head-on collision of two trains and that created basically the progression and need for uh, watches that would be able to have more precise uh, timekeeping on railroads to avoid crashes like this in the future. Ball was one of the leaders in this category and much of that railway influence and watches of that time kind of transcends into what the brand is today. Of course, adapting from pocket watches and things of that sort into a modern context with really tool oriented watches. I'd say one of the calling cards for the brand also is their use of tritium, which is a constant illuminating material, really cool and its application and just how it looks. And I think Ball has some of the most distinctive looking watches on the market that are also very reflective of how the brand all began. Now for this next brand, you probably could throw two in here, uh, Stova and Laco, but I'll probably put most of the focus on Stova because there's a lot of comments about that one in the previous video. And I think for good reason, when you're looking at pilot watches at a more attainable perspective and just other watches. And I think Stova does this incredibly well, uh, looking at their Antia back to Baja house, as well as their Marines. Uh, they also have some interesting chronographs watches that they do, but the Fliegers and those pilot watches are really what Stova is known for. And why I think Stova is such a great brand, a German brand, you probably can include so many German brands on lists like this because they just do a very good job for the money is there's also a lot of history associated with Stova as well. So they were one of the original five brands along with Laka, which we'll of course give a mention to as well here in providing watches for the German Air Force during World War II. Now there's of course, you know, some bad sides of history involved with that, but of course very different times, but there's true history involved with 
this manufacturer and what they're producing. They're still making their watches in the Black Forest in Germany and uh, have a really good mix of just models, uh, customization options as well, and uh, giving it into a door where you want to maybe dabble into the world of Flieger designs, but maybe not spending the most premium of premium amounts, maybe getting into the world like IWC as an example, is kind of being more that luxury tier of this. Uh, Stova delivers a lot of, of value here, as well as having some history connection. And I, I think this is just a brand that a lot of enthusiasts just uh, really gravitate towards. And for good reason, you have a good mix of good value for money, history, and just clean designs. Okay, so now for a brand that I am pretty much 100% sure you are going to be enthusiasts unless you're part of like the British military. And that is CWC or Cabot Watch Company of England. So this is a brand that originally has just a lot of history in the military sector and what they've been doing from their more field oriented watches. This brand is known for actually providing a lot of their timepieces to British military troops. You have iconic models like their G10, which has been used on hundreds of thousands of British troops over the years. The brand's PVD coated SBS dive watches are allegedly still issued and specialized by diving units to this day. And CWC has an unusually interesting history as the brand kind of has stepped up in providing uh, just different types of watches. I see this brand as in a lot of ways as like the British version of Hamilton watches. I don't think they're as widely known and I think that makes them almost a better choice for a video like this. You see one of these watches on somebody's wrist, you either know that they have an appreciation for military timepieces or just watchmaking in general or have some type of just British just or maybe they're just some type of historian and really likes dwelling on timepieces of this type and getting a good value one at that. All right, so now next up, we have a brand that is certainly worthy of being mentioned in a video like this, and that is Christopher Ward. So when I was first getting into watches, I would see Christopher Ward kind of being lumped in as a micro brand, which is very far from the truth now, considering what they've done. Uh, they've become a pretty sizable company. They've invested in developing their own manufacturing arm to create uh, their own in uh, just proprietary movements. And they've done a lot in the world of just embracing e-commerce and going direct to consumer. In regards to what they've done well, I mean, there's a lot. I think the design perspective, I think they've done a ton in that regard too but this is kind of now that mid-market brand uh, in regards to what they're creating. But this brand has really become outside of the world of micro brands, but still very much an enthusiast brand that is well respected for just creating good value for money timepieces. Looking at their Tritons, their Malverns, there's really solid value when looking at Christopher Ward. Their distribution is of course going to have a negative effect as a byproduct of them being a little bit more direct to consumer and selling through their own e-commerce channels. So if you're in the United States like myself, you don't see these as much as I would imagine you see them in Europe. But in regards to respect, being an enthusiast brand and just making a ton of progress and having a great story of trajectory, I think Christopher Wars certainly has to be a brand considered in this realm of watch enthusiast brands that I think just watch enthusiasts love. So in the previous video, I mentioned a few other German brands. Another one that needs to be mentioned is going to be Damasco. So Damasco, really relatively young brand, just started in the 1990s and have just quickly ascended as a really solid, and uh, in terms of their technology and what they've developed with their timepieces, very good value for money. So Damasco actually was making cases for Zinn, and I think probably many people that have been watching uh, just know how much of a fan I am of Zinn watches and what they do uh, in their world. So for Damasco to have a connection there and what they're doing with models like their DS30, uh, I own a Zen 556, absolutely adore the watch, but the DS30 you could argue is just better value for money. Very much the same type of effect, you're getting utilitarian built types of timepieces made in Germany, upped uh, resistance with scratches with a lot of the proprietary technology for their cases. A bit straightforward in their designs, but these watches are just no nonsense, made to last, made to be used as intended. And I think Damasco is probably one of the best values in German watchmaking. And that's saying a lot just as a whole, because German watchmaking typically does a very good job as a nation in uh, providing a ton of value. All right, next up we have a Italian brand, Swiss made watches with Squale. And I think it certainly is a brand that will be a good representation of an enthusiast brand, a dive watch fanatic type brand. I actually owned a Squale 1521 in the past. 
Cool watch, wasn't for me, but I really have to say it was a well-constructed timepiece. I had the uh, blasted case version. Uh, there is certainly some baggage affiliated with this brand. I think it's probably the, the TGV effect and his mentioning in the brand quite a bit that I think a lot of people have maybe went a little sour to this brand, but no question, they do make a good watch if you are a true diver enthusiast. And they do have some interesting history in what they've done in the past. They're um, Italian brand, Swiss made, and they do have a connection to developing cases. Case and architecture and uh, construction is really what they're known for. They were producing it for brands like uh, Blanc Pond back in the 1970s, uh, Doxa as well. And when you're talking about brands with diving pedigree, I mean, Blanc Pond, Doxa, I mean, there's probably no other brands that have as high di diving pedigree from a true diving perspective like those two brands. So Squale, I do think should, I mean, just should be mentioned in this list. Uh, another side of the aisle where I think people maybe sometimes push back on them is they do have a bit of uh, homage watches with some of their like GMT-esque or Submariner-esque designs that they do. But uh, like the 1521 for an example that I've owned, I uh, don't really have anything bad to say about the watch. It, it really was a very well-built piece. And for being under $1,000, I think pretty good value for money with history combined, definitely an enthusiast brand. All right, so now I'm going to jump back to Germany. And we've already mentioned quite a few other brands from Glassuta, but we're going to be doing another one here with Mula Glassuta. So very much the same things that have been said about like Zinn, maybe Ball, uh, as well as Damasco. A lot could be said here for Mula. Just a bit of a different history and approach in terms of what they're designing. So this brand has been around for five generations and now have really just progressed as a watchmaker First got their start working in the world of marine chronometers as well as speedometers, actually worked with BMW in the past, developing uh, speedometers for their motorcycles. So have a well-established history in Glassuta for developing these type of things for years and years. But it was until the 1990s when the brand actually shifted into the world of wristwatches after one of the marine chronometer uh, just clients were requesting, hey, we need some robust divers that can handle being on the on ship and aboard. And they really just answered the call and developed a line of watches and now have just been doing it ever since and really adapting some of their backstory with uh, their production of other just timekeeping elements, marine chronometers, and fusing it into wristwatches. I think there's really good indicators of this and in something like a, a, a Promare Go, uh, some of their Terra Sports kind of adapting some of the designs from tr a traditional Flieger style watches. Or you could also look towards their SAR Rescue Timer, which uh, if you're talking about a robust, different approach to designing a watch for just see like environments. Uh, that is certainly a way of going about it. But this is a brand that is totally enthusiast brand, uh, very much a tool watch brand. And that's kind of a common theme as you'll see with uh, brands that I think fill the void for a video like this. And now for our last brand mentioned here, this one, I could see somebody saying it's maybe a stretch, but let me make a case here. And that is Blanc Pond. So the reason why I wanted to include this brand and why I think it is more of an enthusiast brand is really where it falls in the market and then also combining the history attached to this brand. I think there's a certain type of appreciation one has when looking in the direction. So say you have about, say, $15,000 to spend on a watch. You want something sporty, has something with some history, maybe a dive watch. I think the average type of person would be like, all right, I'm gonna buy Rolex Mariner. But this is why I believe the Blanc Pan, uh, just as a brand, is a perfect representation of an enthusiast watch brand that also you know, has some appeal, of course, with just given the rich history. I mean, we're talking from early 1700s that this brand was produced and uh, as a result of Jean-Claude Biver, uh, really allowed it to be pushed into the marketplace once again. But the type of person that goes towards Blanc Pan is a very specific type of collector that appreciates the history in which this watch represents. Maybe doesn't get the shine like some other dive watches, but truly should get most of the shine for what it was able to do. Much of what was created and the standard for what a dive watch is, uh, being of course very legible, having use of luminescent material, uh, resistance to high pressure underneath the water, all of those type of attributes and the design formula that, that was created by the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms was really followed by pretty much every other brand there on after. A lot of this was a byproduct of the owners of the company. So Jean-Jacques, particularly uh, Jean-Jacques Fischer, was a diver himself. And when he was developing this watch, it really was for partially his own intended purpose and the things that he was able to troubleshoot as a diver in, in the 1950s. Diving um, in terms of a recreational activity, 
very different. So you really needed to have a type of professional that can engage in this. But I also want to mention, you know, after the release of the Blanc Pond 55 of 1953, really becoming that first commercially available dive watch, there is also a ton in regards to the rest of what this brand does in their world of dress watches and other designs. They do some very tasteful reissues. You can also look at the Bathyscaphe as well as just kind of a different aspect of Blanc Pond's history and execution of dive watch design. I just think it's appropriate to put them in a list like this because the type of person, again, who's going to be looking in the direction, has the money to spend, uh, and goes towards a Blanc Pond is a very different type of person, a person that is a person of culture, appreciation, and the history behind what this brand represents uh, in the world of watchmaking. And I'll link down below to a very helpful uh, presentation to give even more appreciation for what Blanc Pond was able to uh, just accomplish in the world of dive watches and just in the world of watchmaking a bit more. Uh, so I'll link to that down below. Very good presentation uh, and also the video where I reviewed the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms uh, in titanium. But all right, guys, those are my choices for other brands, part two, that I think are pretty easy indicators to know if somebody is a watch enthusiast. But please leave comments down below. Any other brands that you think are good indicators? Also, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. That does help out the channel just tremendously. Also, definitely check out the giveaway. Have a new giveaway happening, so just follow the form, fill it out, follow the instructions, and you'll be good to go. And then also, teddybalbasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 25 brands, makes all this content possible. Uh, we also have quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, full factory warranty for everything we carry. So if something goes wrong, you're completely covered. Multiple year warranty for all the brands that we carry. And then in addition to that, also nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into this content that we're creating. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.